<laughs> oh my god, did some people see that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night AWO. In this case, this is uh, almost. I'm going to probably upload this in the morning. It's a very late night. It's a very late night. Eight, well, it's going to probably be early morning. Uh. AEW Dynamite review. Um, you could say maybe a little bit of a AEW All Access review too. Maybe I did saw the episode. It's basically a fucking reality show. Okay, it's literally a stupid reality show where they're gonna try to make it seem like this is real, or whatever. Um, you could say maybe some elements are real. Sure, I mean obviously like. It's reality, but it's like real based on real shit. Like for example, Adam they cover Adam Cole's injury and shit, but like it's obviously exaggerated for television because that's basically what this is in the reality TV show. You see, when I think of if you're gonna do a show like this, if you're gonna do a sort of some sort of a behind the scenes type of show, I mean like, am I I I honestly thought that AEW All Access. Was like their attempt to be like TNA Reaction. If you guys don't remember TNA Reaction, TNA used to do like this after show special where basically like it's like a continuation. Uh, it was basically like let's say you could say an extra hour of their schedule, an extra hour basically being three hours kind of on Thursday nights. Uh, and it was just that, yeah, it was basically like you know the after show post show type of shit. You know, which is like, oh, what happened? For example, one episode that come to mind was like when they had that segment where RVD got injured by Abyss with the Janus weapon. Like that was, for example, like, oh, is RVD RVD okay? For that example, was like, you know, that's a, a good way. That's a something good, right? By the way, that that fucking shit looked like RVD got murdered. Like fuck. Um which is crazy, by the way. That was a, one of the most gruesome, craziest things. Like, without showing what happened, it was, like, one of the most gru gruesome segments of TNA. And I would think, like, you know, that, like, well, that was their attempt to do, like, something like, you know, sure, that post-show thing. But no, this is just a stupid gay reality show. Like, what I remember from the reality show is, like, oh, Adam Cole's gay injury, Rip Breaker, you know, they're mentioning the whole how, um, you know, they're talking about how, oh, you know, they don't have the title, how Burt Baker doesn't have a world, they don't have a world, the women's champion or whatever. And this is, like, after the media scrum, which I'm thinking to myself, if you want to get some viewership, why didn't they fucking, I don't know, take advantage of the media scrum and cover that? You know? Like, why didn't they not mention, like, do the whole, like, mention the whole all-out media scrum? With CM Punk. That itself would have been an interesting thing. To go go over. Even though it would be kind of like. You know fake reality shit. But they didn't do that. It's just like. Literally it's like. After the stupid. It's after full, uh, 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 all out. They're going close to full gear. Covering full gear. Skate shit about Adam Cole. So basically this. The main star from what I'm guessing about this shit. Is about Adam Cole and Britt Baker. So this is basically, basically an Adam Cole Brick Baker show. I don't know how that because I don't really care. I'm just thinking to myself still like how does Adam Cole like how, how I don't know because I mean, to be fair, maybe Brick Baker's bisexual. Same same thing with Anna J. They just like the penis, you know. Even though they they want the feminine self, but with the penis, you know, instead of using a fucking dildo. That's why they're dating these dudes, you know. That's for damn sure. But yeah, fucking. But yeah, fucking Tony Khan pulling his inner McMahon, supposedly. That's what they said. But yeah, like that All Access. So yeah, basically, let's talk about All Access, right? All Access was just like they covered fucking stupid Ty Conti. Something about Ty Conti. Um, I don't know. Like they con something about Ty Conti, Kyle O'Reilly, shit. Uh, they show like something about... They show like how oh the young bucks we miss Adam Cole like what kind of gay shit is this man? They showed that uh, yeah. 
Big Show is there or the whatever. So it's like it's funny how you know they're not there, but yeah, the and the Eddie King's like, I love you, the Blood Bucks. Like, what kind of shit is this, man? I'm telling you, like, wow. Yeah, this is just a bunch of stupid shit. It's like, oh, they hate Brit the, the people hate Ruby Soho or the Young Bucks are loved, you know? People love Adam Cole Gay Gay. They want to suck his dick and take Conti it wants to be a Brazilian jiu-jitsu person on TV and I don't know, some stupid shit. But uh, yeah, that was just that's the main thing, the show. And then Britt Baker fucking Adam Cole's relationship. That was basically all access. It's basically no different. Like, at, when I, like way back, like years ago, when I was like really young, for some reason, my family members, like, not family members, the girl, the fuck, I mean, it was just like surprising. My, 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 one of my cousins is like younger than, she's younger than me, like four, four years younger or something. Four or five years younger. And even when I was like around 10 at the time, I think, it was like 10 or 9, she was watching Keep, Keeping Up with the Kardashians as a five year old. It's like, that itself, you know, people are screwed. And especially, like, I'll be honest with you, she had a kind of fucking, like, a phase where how the how women are nowadays and shit, unfortunately. I'm not hating on her, but that's, like, unfortunately. That's the nature, like, in modern women and shit. You know, a lot of these women grew up watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians even when they were five years old, for fuck's sakes. So that itself is, like, y'all, y'all screwed. And little, little did I know that was a problem because I didn't know what the fuck keep car, Keeping Up with the Kardashians was beforehand. Well, you know... It's basically like keep it go, keep up with the Kardashian type of shit, stupid reality show type of shit. It's like who fucking cares, okay? Like what a waste, what a fucking waste. Just wanted to see like what how is it gonna be like. But it's like so much for taking advantage of the media scrum, which could probably get some viewership for your show or whatever. But no, it is what it is, okay? So the show started with Jungle Boy defeating Matt Hardy for some reason. Why did Matt Hardy? face Jungle Boy for some reason. I don't fucking know. There's no story with this match. And for some reason, Jung uh, e Hook, like, I don't know, Ethan Page and Matt Hardy, they're like, I don't know, in, they're, they're together. Even though, like, didn't Matt Hardy not want to be part of a group with him? Like, what the fuck? I don't know. Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara shown seeing this match or whatever. Then after the match, MJF comes out and he says he know people aren't very bright in these parts, and he runs the show, so shut your mouths. MJF doesn't appreciate Jack interrupting his rebar mitzvah, and it was kind of a Kanye move, to be honest. But there's one thing that really struck Max crew, and that is, that after all, all double or nothing, their career, or, or something about some stupid shit, like their dream, their fucking stupid pillar match, I don't know, from two, three years ago that no one cares about. Oh, they steal the show, whatever. Their career paths diverge and have the audacity to say MJF had it easy. He tell you something, Jack, Jack is right. His job's a joke, he barely wrestles and breaks the sweat and he gets to uh, obligate the, these losers, uh, 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 obliterate these losers. He collects a fat check and gets to let Lear Jet back home to this magical place where Long Island, New York. And there's and then there's Jack's career, which is a, a kind of mid. But he'll give him credit, he'll work his ass off and scratch and crawl the standout match uh, after standout match for these fans. And he recalls these people for thanking Jack. Ja Thank you, Jack fan chance, but MJ says it's too late. MJ doesn't recall being rewarded with all that TV time either. As he has right to be praised, he, but he shouldn't be pissed at MJF or this company by it himself. After the match of Double or Nothing, which was a going to war 90 degree weather just to prove that they're in the future of the sport, Max went to the back and had a funny feeling that they uh, that he had met his equal. For the first time, he met a man in a ring that he respected, so he swallowed his pride and shook the hand, his hand backstage and gave him some advice. He asked J uh, Jack if he remembers the advice that Jack does. Jack says MJF told him that he had the potential in the world, but nice guys finished last. And if he ever wanted to f uh, be successful, he had to ditch all his friends and not care about anyone by himself. 
Max confirmed that that's what he said, and then Jack crapped for sticking up with Marco Stunt, Luchasaurus, and the worst of all, Christian Cage, and tells him to accept, expect Hook to Japan the way, same way out. See, I mentioned, re oh, oh, like backstage pulls out, bro. Uh, they could have worked together, ran the show, uh, show together, uh, just to show how the good guy, like, who, uh, how it's good to be the good guy for these, but he had to be the good guy for these people. He stands, uh, here we stand three years later, and MJF uh, is the best wrestler in the world, the grandest prize of all, and Jack says he has still is still his jungle boy. Jack wishes he could be more like Max. He wishes he could talk like him and has the confidence and he could care about himself and everyone else that could stab people in the back and get what he wants and he could be the dude the narcissist is piece of shit in the entire business. But that ain't him and isn't the road to the top is harder than Max, so be it. He'll do it the way and he when he beats MJ and becomes a world champion, at least he won't wake up alone every day and hate the person he sees in the mirror. So mentioning the whole like losing his girlfriend type of shit. MGF says this, he's really good at asking the crowd to give up, but it only took him four years to learn how to talk. He talks Jack into how a weak of mind, body, soul, and his heart, and by the way, he pulled Jack's hot piece of ass girlfriend, Anna J aside and called him weak between, and called him weak between his legs, too. So they mentioning, yeah, Anna J, which, by the way, Anna J's pretty fucking hot. That's for damn sure she invited my big black couch and go, she don't shit. Same thing for, you know, Britt Baker, because, you know, she can't be with that fucking faggot unless she likes the penis. But hey, you know what? Once you go, a real, real man's penis, you ain't go back to need, need some fucking bisexual shit. But hey, you know, I guess all, all these women are sequel bisexual, so, you know, what can, you, what can you say? But, um,. I mean, definitely the story is like, you know, you know what they should do as a story, which would be fun. This got me thinking. Like, MGF's thing is that he's basically trying to get with every chick in AEW. Or he's trying to get with fucking all these chicks, like, because they messed his part Mispa. Like, basically what they should do, fucking MGF is going to try to, he's going to try to pull fucking Anna J. Then he's going to try to pull fucking Tay Mello. And then he's gonna try to maybe pull a fucking Darby Allen, whatever the fuck he has. Probably not. Probably a boyfriend. I don't know. What <laughs> no. I don't know. He probably dates boys, but I don't know. Apparently he dated fucking Gigi Dolan. Apparently, but so maybe like they can mention that and sort of like he even like this will all like come back at fucking MJF. Basically tries to pull these checks. Maybe he does. I don't fucking know. But then he I don't know. But maybe like in the end they yeah then he doesn't get those girls and then it's like you know he gets like his comeuppance. Like this makes them angry because again you gotta make this shit personal like why not like you see a shit like this going personal with Anna J should that helps create a story like you're not like that could be MJ's thing like you know what he has everything but you know fuck it I want some chicks I could fool around and shit like that I don't give a fuck I'll get with the highest chicks possible you just want to fucking hook up with Anna J and Tame Mello that could make the fucking boyfriends angry that's how you fucking create stories for fuck's sakes you know MJ said fuck, fucking piece of shit. He'll fucking try to pull these chicks. That's how you gotta do it, man. That's how you fucking create a good story. Makes sense for everybody. And then just, oh, I'm a pillar and bullshit. Obviously, I think, like, if they're gonna try to build to this stupid Fatal 4 match, they're gonna probably do. I do think MJ should face all these wrestlers individually. Sure, he faced them before. But in this case, since he's the world champion, it would make sense. Like, if you're gonna build that Fatal 4 match, you gotta do each, each little match to each other. And then you build up to that. But that should be perfect time to do all that to build up to double or nothing. That's how I would do it. But, you know, it's good. they're gonna do some gay shit. That, oh, they're not gonna do that, you know. But then after what he said about, like, how, you know, Jungle Boy is weak... With his uh, hot, hot ass girlfriend Nana J, which she is fucking amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you, just, but like, what, what, what is it like? Apparently, like Jungle Boy, he kisses dudes, so that makes something like, but you know, I don't know. Apparently, it was because of fucking that tranny bitch. What's the name? One of the tranny bitches, not fucking Nala Rose. Something I don't know. The the who looks like a dude. Uh, that person paired them too. I don't know because he's like that dude is friends with Anna J and also Jungle Boy and apparently they kissed each other or whatever. It's like I don't know. They have common gay interests. I guess you know it's because you know maybe Jungle Boy's secretly gay, but he has boss. You know he's he's okay with I guess you know giving his penis to Anna J because I don't know Anna J likes fucking feminine dudes. I don't fucking know. That's like 
metrosexual males, I would say. I don't know, it is whatever, this this promo, but just, uh, it is what it is. It's just only got personal with this, it's just the thing is, what is, like, what is the real story? Why do they want to f beat MJF just because, okay, so they're mentioning some bullshit Mac was in, like, that's the cheap excuse. To make it seem like there's a story with this. Like, there's no real story. There was not even a story back then. Like, why do they hate each other? Like, I, why did they interrupt MJF Bar Mitzvah for what? You know, it's not like he did anything to them. But I don't fucking know. It is what it is. Like, hopefully they establish more heat, you know? We get the 2.0 taking the claim and daddy ass. A.K. fucking, I hate that. That sounds gay. A.K. Billy Gunn out to sell them on the Jericho Breach Society. This is what they're doing. They're legit doing this instead of like... I mean, is this supposedly funny? Sure. But it's like... This is what the Acclaim is doing after losing the tag titles? Like... Shouldn't they want to face fucking the, uh, the, the the gun club to get revenge since they didn't really get a 401 rematch clause? Like, for God's sake. Whatever. The Blackpool Combat Club defeated Dalton, Castle, and the boys. Some ROH people. And this is this is how you're supposed to do it, by the way, people. This is how they're supposed to do it. So I'm happy. This is If I have to say only one positive of the show, I would say the positive is definitely how they're treating the Blackpool Combat Club. I'm liking that, you know, they, how they're treating the Blackpool Combat Club. And yeah, they're a heel faction now officially. Especially what happened tonight. With every member. Um... I like that they squashed the jobbers because it made no sense. Like, why would these jobbers like, have these long matches with these people? But, it made, but it's like, again, it happened before, which is like a problem. Like, why are these matches so long for their sake of being long just to appeal to smarts? And it doesn't, it's not believable when these guys are legit jobbers compared to, like, Dean Ambrose and shit. Like, come on here. But whatever. It's good that fucking they squashed these jobbers, so that's good. Backstage, we see Don Callis approaches Hangman Page after, like, they showed earlier that Don Cal Callis was made uh, Kenny Omega angry about what happened last week. Kenny Omega realized that it's not Hangman Page's fault or whatever. Then Don Callis eventually approaches Hangman and said he lost his balance and fell down. And he apologized to Hangman and he extended his hand. But then the Blackpool Combat Club shows up and attacks basically both of them. Apparently, during this, uh, uh, what's his name? Don Callis legit got injured during this. This may even cause maybe some issues in terms of how they're booking this. Maybe because he's trying to be involved. They're clearly trying to make some bullshit where, oh, D Kenny Omega, you know, some dissension between Kenny and Hangman, but maybe most likely he might not be here now since he legit got injured to be part of the feud, unless they're going to make this part of the feud, which I don't, again, they should. Like, I mean, it makes sense. It's right in the table. Take advantage with this now. Like, take advantage, like, oh, you injured my manager type of deal to Kenny. So, there you go, you know? Uh, Omega. So, here's my problem. Again, this is a typical bullshit. If anything, this is worse than last week, too. People, I hate that people, even smart, pretend that there was a story last week, the match with Kenny. Oh, because he's conflicted. He's conflicted about this dream match because he's worried about his friends. That's bullshit. That's a fake and fake story. There's no story legit in this fucking match between the wrestlers. Like, why does he hate the fucking wrestler to want to fucking face the guy? What's the reason to face each other besides a dream match? Same thing with this shit. You know... Like, you say, the, okay, the only story by logic is fucking Kenny with the fucking... With, you know, Black Bull Combat Club. Then why not have him face one of the guys? I don't fucking know. Or face a guy that people actually know in AEW. Who the fuck is Jeff Cobb? And they're making this bullshit up because... And some smarts are saying this makes sense because... Oh, Kenny Omega is facing a guy who teamed up with Will Ospreay. Uh, who fucking... First of all, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit about Wiz Osprey? Who gives a shit about this fucking New Japan bullshit? I don't give a fuck. Again, why are you defending a title... That is part of New Japan on AEW. Why are they doing this shit? It makes no fucking sense. This is, again, this is AEW. I'm watching for AEW. AEW is supposed to be the second biggest promotion. And you're bothering to do a stupid match for New Japan and shit like that. And not just that, when there's a, not a real story in this match. Don't give me this bullshit that, oh, you should care. There is a story because of something about New Japan. I don't fucking care. This is AEW. That's like saying you're watching a TV show. Legit, a TV show. A popular TV show. And we have to worry about that. Like, the fucking legit. Like, the actor. 
Like, that's like saying we should care about a random character from another TV show who guest stars on this stupid TV show. And apparently they're fiddling with each other in some other TV show. We should care about that. Uh, like, even though there's like, no, there's not like, there's not like a, you know, it's not like a sequel to the show. It's just that, oh, this, but it's like, it's not like they're not the same character. They're legit, like, they're like different characters, but we're supposed to care that this is like, you know, let's just say even like, for example, let's say some stupid bullshit scenario. Like, uh, for example, a real TV show. If you guys remember, was it Grandfathered or whatever? It was that show with Josh Peck and John Stamos. Josh Peck, a totally different character. But Drake Bell was in one episode. Drake Bell was in one fucking episode. And he was a totally different character. And we're supposed to care because, you know, oh, hug me, brother. Like, uh, you know, that that's that fucking, you know, catchphrase from that stupid, like, you know, trope. From Drake and Josh. We know that because Drake and Josh was a popular TV show. Okay? And people who are fans of Drake and Josh, sure. But guess what? And But here's the problem with this. Who fucking cares? If it's Kenny Omega. Ver- like, the, the thing is. It's not like this is a pop. Cause again, no one really knows what New Japan is. What I'm trying to get to say is that. No one fucking cares about New Japan. No one knows what New Japan. Or, or besides Marks. And no one cares. Again, I'm watching AEW, which is supposed to be the second biggest TV show, and you wonder why you're not getting high ratings. Because of stupid shit like this. Shit that makes no, no fucking sense when you're a casual viewer. Or not just that, when you're trying to fucking enjoy pro wrestling. But again, oh, but, but, you know, you don't do your research, pal. No one knows the need to do their fucking goddamn research. People have lies, you stupid fucks. And again, what? So... If WCW brings a jobber, which they have done that, they're guilty of doing that. Bringing fucking Japanese guys or whatever. They're guilty of doing that shit. We're supposed to care about those Japanese guys because they're from Japan. Even when that shit happened, people didn't give a fuck. So, like, if you go on the internet, people will complain, oh, how do you not care about this guy facing fucking, you know, Dean Malenko and whatever in some gay boy match? How do you not care about that wrestler? There is a story, guys. There's a story because they're in New Japan. Shut up. That's like that stupid scenario. This is like saying you have fucking, let's say this. Let's say you have an old Raw. That's like saying we having fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin versus some Japanese guy or let's say versus Dean Malenko before Dean Malenko is like well known to people. You know, it's like that scenario. Or, you know, let's say even fucking, let's say if John Cena was to face Will Ospreay in WWE but before Will Ospreay came Somewhat well known to these Sparky fans. How does that make any fucking sense? Without any real story. And oh, but, but Will Osprey has some Hillary with AJ Styles, whatever. Which, again, why, why should we give a fuck? You know? Like, why should we give a fuck? Like, that's like that's what people are saying. Because this is something important for a, a future match with Kenny and Will Osprey. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? What the fuck was going on the show? The, the New Japan has nothing to do with AEW besides your stupid game Forbidden Door, which, by the way, is stupid. Again, I am totally against Forbidden Door because it's just fucking stupid. It's just to appeal to fucking smarts. And I hate that that's the thing. I hate that they're throwing Forbidden Door again. And I hate that it's fucking a legit thing for AEW. But again, like, this is the problem. Like, you wonder why people don't give a shit. Because, again, like, this is not going to draw any viewership, okay? I'm sorry. It's not going to draw any viewership besides the smarts. No one fucking knows who these Japanese jobbers are. No one knows the fuck Jeff Cobb and shit like that. Stop pretending that there's there's a story in this match when there's not. Okay? It's just a fake story you guys are making up when it hasn't even been established. But it's like, it's just your stupid gay fantasy just to defend this shit because you like fucking New Japan or you like Kenny, you like AEW. You're that much an AEW show that you see no wrong and you're just that much of a smart that you can't fucking criticize. You think, how dare we criticize this? How dare we not care about all wrestling? How dare we care not care about the match? Who cares? It has a good Motherfuckers, wrestling's about characters and storylines. Not just about stupid banger matches where they're not going to be matches that you remember in the future. If anything, I legit already forgot about the match from last week with the main event with Kenny. But because I, the only reason why I remember this shit is because this is like the same bullshit that has had going on again. Why are they keep doing these nonsense, fucking stupid, inter-promotional bullshit? 
No one fucking knows who these matches. No one knows who the fuck these guys are. Stop caring to smarts with this shit. Stop it. It's just nothing but caring to smarty gay bullshit. Stop with the promotional bullshit. At least this was not the main event. But it's like, it's stupid. I'm sorry. It's stupid. It's gay. It's garbage. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. I'm sorry. Kerry Mega defeated uh, fucking the guy. I don't give a shit about the match. But again, it's just stupid. Like, you, you can't just bring in some guy and we gotta pretend there's a story because something about New Japan with Kenny Omega and some team member with the other guy. Some bullshit. Like, I don't give a fuck, okay? If that's the case, then where the, where the fuck is that guy then, huh? I don't fucking know. And not just that, like... Yes, there's a story with Kenny worrying about his friends and whatever. But, like, then show it. Uh, how about having face... But, again, why not have Kenny Omega versus somebody on AEW? You're struggling with yourself of having people on your show. And you you rather fucking bring some stupid guy from fucking another promotion. People are complaining that guys like Nero's not on the show. And fucking... All these wrestlers and shit that you guys signed. You guys sign a lot of these wrestlers, and but, and you wonder why why you guys have a problem. Yet yeah, now look what happened. Like you're fucking leaving wrestlers off, and then you're fucking around bringing these New Japan people. What the fuck is wrong with you? Ken Omega had his New Japan theme. Like again, I I don't know much about New Japan and shit. I do know that that's just like his a, 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 like New Japan theme. It's actually not a bad theme song or whatever. But again, I don't really care. So after the match, the Countback Club attacks, uh, you know, uh, Kenny again. But then Brian Jameson comes out. He's like, you know, what, what are you doing? Get away, whatever. Then Will you know, goes on top of the ring to try, and then Kenny can try to stop him. And then, oh, oh my God, oh wow, Dangerous is actually aligned with them. Oh, he's healed too. So Dan so Brian Davis is a heel again, and he's healed with these people. I don't mind it, honestly. If anything, I do like that. I, I am liking the Black Bull Combat Club with this direction. I like Daniel Bryan more as a heel, honestly. I think he's a way better heel than a face. Because being a face is just, yes, yes, is gay. I always thought it was gay even in WWE. And just him getting to Sparks, I do think he's a way better heel than a face. He actually does something. Him being a, like this, like the whole... You know, when, uh, first of all, when he was in the, when he was the, his original heel run in 2012, when he was doing saying yes when everyone's saying no, that was like good. Like him being a noxious heel and then being the planet champion, I, I, I like it, you know. So I hope to see something like that. I know, like, he tried to be a heel in AEW. I'm not gonna lie to you, that heel run was kind of gay. And now he's like a heel again. Like, I don't know. In, in this state, like, it kind of feels like, like, what? Are they doing some bullshit where it's like. Big show heel turn, like they can't keep consistency. Like, I understand they kind of need, like, they need to turn heel, but it's like you could have kept them healed the whole entire time. I don't know why Brian and Moxie honestly became a team, or unless, like, you could have just turned them to being heels from the start, and it would have been a better direction. Because look at it now, they're already a better direction, honestly, like, with them being heels. So, like, I'd rather they have been a heel in the, the entire time. Orange Cassidy defeats the Butcher. Who the fuck is the Butcher? Even though that's like a wrestler they have in AEW. But yet, like, they rather... I don't know. No one fucking cares. So, Orange Cast defeats the Butcher. And I don't fucking care in this match. No story. No thing. Like, who fucking cares about this match? I don't fucking know. Literally, every time fucking... I'm surprised this match is not open to show, by the way. Because it seems like every time they open the show is with Orange Cassidy. But yeah, it's the same shit. It's like fucking Orange Cassidy fucking defending this title when there's no story. It's like a TV title. Like, what the fuck? Ruby So defeats Willow Nightingale with a roll-up or whatever. And this match is too long and no one cares about what guy been wrestling and shit like that. So, uh, after the match, the outcast attack Nightingale, this fat whale, uh, until Sky Blue and Rio come out. Who, like, who fucking cares? Uh, so Rio was about to use a face paint. But then Jamie Hayter comes out. And they mentioned how, oh, she's coming out to save her opponent for next week when she's defending. So, she's defending her title against Riho? Why? How does that make any fucking sense? And especially when she's a baby face. How does that make any fucking sense? 
And why does he? Why do they care about Rio? I don't fucking get it. Why is she maybe defending the title against Ruby Soho? For God's sake, if that makes more and more fucking sense. Soraya, like, for God, how does this make any fucking sense? Like, come on, come on, Tony Storm. Like, anyway, like, why? I I don't know. Oh, but it's gonna be a banger. No, no one will care. Was it announced for Rampage? Sammy Guevara versus Mr. Take a Shit. Uh, Action Drady versus Juice Robinson or whatever. Taya Valkyrie versus Marina Shafir. And Best Friends versus the King of the Black Thorns. For the trios title? What the fuck? I don't fucking... I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. I don't care. Next week on Dynamite is MJF Day. Because to get it to be in Long Island, I don't know how that's... I don't know. Whatever. Uh, the Guns versus FTR. This is going to be the big match next week. Because, oh, if they lose, like, I'd rather if they did saved up this match for a double or nothing. Again, they have to build, like, but, like, they can't just do a normal match. I, I understand, like, you know, bullshit, but, like, whatever. Jamie here versus Ruby, so, or, or, not Ruby, a fucking Riho, whatever. Juice Robinson versus Freaky Starks, and we were here in the Black Blue Combat Club. <sighs> I don't care. And the main event, this is the big thing of the show. Um... Adam Cole, Gay Gay, defeats Daniel Garcia. Didn't give shit about this match at all. Because, you know, I don't give shit about... Like, listen. I don't condone injury, and I'm happy the guy is okay. Again, I'm, I'm, again I know I may seem like, you know, I don't give shit about these people. I may seem like a hard, bad guy. Just because I don't care about these wrestlers who are gay, and I think they're not really entertaining at all. It doesn't mean I hate the person. Uh, but, I'm sorry. I don't give shit about Adam Cole. Gay Gay, this match was like shit. And then after the match, oh, Britt Baker comes out, kisses him, blah, blah, blah. I'm guessing, I'm guessing some stupid shit for fucking all access or whatever. And then, what? why do I have a feeling this could be like Total Divas? This, this is basically Total Divas to shit, huh? What? What's next? Fucking Britt Baker and fucking Adam Cole becomes champions and they're fucking be a fucking the stupid power couple shit? You know damn well that's gonna happen. Well, it's good. Adam Cole's going to be the one to, to throw on MJF, which I hope that doesn't happen. I don't see them, but I, I see that would probably happen, unfortunately. Jericho comes out to sh help Garcia out of the ring without even looking at Cole. He suddenly stops and o look over the shoulder briefly, and then he heads to the back. You see, this would make sense if they showed the, the like, let's say if Adam Cole legit beat the shit out of fucking Garcia. But they didn't, because they had, like, a little competitive match, so... I don't know what to tell you. Like that would make more sense. But again, really, you're gonna do that. This is the problem, and this is why I don't like what they're gonna do with Jericho. And you know, Jim, Jer well, because Jer Adam Cole just came back. Well, how would they? Why would they have him lose? Right? Really, Jericho versus Gar uh, Adam Cole, gay, gay. I mean, wouldn't this make sense if this was the match to start the, the fucking be the first match for maybe Adam Cole because it's a big match to do for the main event instead of so like Daniel Garcia? Like what? But, like, I, this only makes sense if you're going to do this type of shit where, oh, you know, Jericho wants to have, has a problem with Garcia, uh, have a problem with Cole. If, like, he actually cared for Garcia and he got beat, this, this shit be, being the crap out of him, you know? But, like, legit, like, Garcia just knocked out for some reason. I don't fucking know. I don't give a shit. This is just stupid, in my honest opinion. I don't give a shit about I'm called gay gay. This entire show. I know Smarts were probably praising this shit, but to me, this show is pretty much your gay, boring dynamite. Just smarty shit, and I don't care. Uh, fuck all access. Waste of time. Um, that's all to say. I'm just keep real. Get your games close. My missing leads. My missing bitches go. Shit, shit. Oh, I, how can I forget? I drink my, didn't drink my beautiful cola. Anyways, that's all to say. You know, definitely, you know, if you give this to Britt Baker and um, Anna J, they damn sure won't be accusing of sexual accusations if you gave them some alcohol and then they want to fuck you. So that's for damn sure. So no accusations for me. Get, you know, get them, they invite my big black couch. Get yourself a chick. Give her a fucking cola, styles glass, wine glass, whatever the fuck. Drink my Nisley. It's by Mr. Bitches Go, oh, Bitches Go, oh, show, show, big black couch. And it's good stuff, okay? They'll be happy. Especially with the Zoopster on the big black couch, hell yeah.
compared to these fucking fags. Like, come on. I legit fucking am more buff than fucking Adam Gold Gay Gay. I mean, he's like, uh, I mean, like, compared, I mean, last, like, two years ago, actually, definitely, I was. The only reason, like, we're not, because, like, last year, I did got injured from wrestling, like, when I was, like, doing am amateur wrestling, and then, like, recently, I just had my nose surgery, so that's why I lost muscle and shit, but, hey, I'll get back to the grind, I'm gonna show these motherfuckers, like, right after, like, Ramadan, after I, I finished my fast and shit, I'm gonna kick these, I could kick these motherfuckers' ass, like, that. I could even still do it, like, who gives a fuck? Come on, like these gay guys, come on. <laughs> come on, these fucking gay guys, they get for themselves, man, shit. But yeah, like seriously, this show is pretty gay, man. Just gay, boring bullshit. The whole big thing was just like, oh, I'm called gay, gay, big return. And, um, I don't know, some stupid shit. No, oh, all access, you know? Wow. Uh, the only real positive is really the Blackpool Combat Club, I guess. That's really it. That's really it. That's all I have to get, say. Um, let's keep real, get your games calls. My music is fine. This bitch go, oh, shit, oh, shit. I'm going to try to eat before I have to start fasting. Till next time, peace. Yeah, bye. WrestleMania weekend, guys. And I'm fucking tired. Oh, Lord. This is not an easy weekend, people.